gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. I'm so behind me gratitude to the left of me gratitude to the right of me gratitude above me gratitude below me gratitude within me gratitude all around me I'm so grateful Open to the light, open to the light, open to the light of love, open to the light, open to the light. Thank you, Angela. Good morning. My name is Reverend Patty Williams, and it's truly my honor to welcome you to Unity of Salem's online service. Shall we center together in prayer? Hmm, sweet, sweet spirit. We truly come together in gratitude. And as we connect heart to heart, we know there is no distance, that we are truly one right now in this moment and for this opportunity to be in spiritual community, we give thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Good morning, my name is Danita and I'm your platform assistant today. If you have any questions or would like more information about any of these announcements, please contact the office. Amy and Reverend Patty are available by phone or email Monday through Thursday, through our, uh, though our office is not open to the public at this time. We are hosting an online daily prayer and check-in time at 11 a.m. Monday through Thursday using the Zoom platform. The link to the gathering is in our weekly email and in the events on our community Facebook group. We are looking to hire a bookkeeper part-time for the church. If interested, please e uh, mail your resume to the church. A new members class is beginning uh, online Tuesday, May 12th. To register, call or email the office. 
After the service today, Reverend Patty will be hosting a coffee talk using the Zoom platform, and anyone who would like to join in and connect with each other uh, may do so. The link is in our e weekly email, and we'll post it on the Facebook page. We now join together in affirming unity of Salem's mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement, centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values, inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Elizabeth up to share our word for the day. Let go, let God. I release and I am at peace. Sometimes when I'm rushing to accomplish a task or reach a goal, I encounter continual obstacles and time seems to be running out. The harder I work, the more bogged down I get. However, I've learned this frustration can be a positive prompt for me to remember I am not alone. When I notice my stuckness or exasperation, I remember I can make a new decision to let go and let God. I let go of frustration and worry and call on the divine in me for ideas, clear direction, and peace of mind to do what I feel called to do. Letting go brings a fresh outlook to my task at hand. Answers come to mind, people show up to help, and my path becomes smoother. I release and I am at peace. And from Jeremiah 42, three, let the Lord, your God, show us where we should go and what we should do. Oh, this day we pray. 
In early April, I was inspired when I heard that it was um, Poetry Month, and I decided to do a series on Unity Classic Poems. And today, we're doing one that I just love. Um, I first heard this in a class when I was in ministerial school, and we were reading a book called Unity's Treasure Chest, and there was an article in there by Lowell Fillmore, and I, at the time, didn't know much about Lowell Fillmore. Um, I knew that he was the son of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who were the founders of the Unity movement, and I was amazed at how much I learned about him. He was the president of Unity for over 50 years. There's a garden at Unity Village that is dedicated to you, that Lowell Fillmore, if I could get his name out. And um, Mark Fuss, Reverend Mark Fuss, who I, was a classmate of mine, was there during the dedication of that garden when it was renewed and restored. And Mark said, if Myrtle is considered the mother of Unity, then Lowell is its great beating heart. And that really is, is what I have found out about this amazing person. His first job at Unity was when he was 10 years old. And he began in the mailroom. And, and when his father made his transition, when Charles passed on, that's when Lowell became the president of Unity. There's a book called Unity's Unsung Hero. It was written by Neil Valley, who recently passed away. And what he says in this book is, everyone loved Lowell. There was just no one that had anything other than loving thoughts and praise for this gentleman. And that his approachable attitude in the workplace was legendary. And what I have gotten from everything I have heard and read is that unity is what it is today because of the work of Lowell Fillmore. He, he expanded the vision to a worldwide vision, a worldwide communication. And he was so approachable that his office was with the rest of the staff in the administration building. And he was known um, to dress up every year and be a part of the variety show. And you never knew what was going to happen. His humor would show up. And he loved Unity so much that he never took a vacation. He said his job was his vacation. He would travel for Unity, but it was part of his work, and he absolutely loved it. So here's the poem that we are looking at today. It's called The Answer. When for a purpose I had prayed and prayed and prayed until my words seem worn and bare with arduous use. And I had knocked and asked and knocked and asked again. All my fervor and persistence brought no hope. I paused to give my weary brain a rest and ceased my anxious human cry in that still moment after self had tried and failed, there came a glorious vision of God's power. And lo, my prayer was answered in that hour. And when I quit beating my head against the wall and let go and trust in God, something happens. The, the miracles of life can happen when we quit trying to force the answers and get out of the way and let the answers flow from deep within our soul. Get out of our own way. What a concept. You know, we hear this saying so much, let go and let God. It's become somewhat of a cliche. And do we really understand what that means? I know it's a cliche that Lowell would have used. He was known for what's called his Lowellisms. And he had sayings for just about everything. He had jokes for just about everything. Because he did not take everything seriously. He took everything as being in the moment, of being present, of being joy. 
I think that's what prayer is about. It's reconnecting to that joy of the heart. That that's about, that's what this poem is about. I think Lowell was very clear in all of his writings that we pray to connect and change our own energy, to change our vibration. And when we can accomplish that and become one with the vibration of the universe, that's when the answers can come. So we do not pray to change others. We do not pray to change situations. We pray to change ourselves. And we pray to be in harmony with the good. That's using Lowell's words. One of the stories Lowell told is about a man who did not believe in prayer. And this man said, this is one of his stories, so this man said he prayed once when he was lost in a forest, could not find his way out. And he prayed and prayed for a way out. And God didn't answer his prayer. Finally, two gentlemen had to show up and show him the way. That sounds like answered prayer to me. So often we don't recognize the answers. They show up. They show up in our lives in amazing ways. And we are not open to anything but the way that we are beating our head against the wall and trying to find. What if we stopped? What if we let go? What if we allowed that still moment to show us a new possibility? I was reading Lowell's book, New Ways to Solve Old Problems. And someone asked him, if God already knows what we need, why do we have to pray at all? His short answer, so that we can cooperate with and enjoy the good. It's really, again, about changing us. And then he goes on to refer to prayer as the wire that connects us to the great powerhouse, just like the wires that connect the electricity to our home and the transformers in the power plant that prayer is that connection for us, that we connect. We have to flip that switch and allow that vibrational energy to flow through us. And, and we cultivate that energy, that connection through prayer. And we must be persistent. We must be persistent in our praying, not in telling God our problems, but in reconnecting over and over and over, because so often we disconnect, we shut down, we become oblivious, and we need to be consciously awake and aware, let, letting go of our limited perspective and opening up to the flow. Like the light switch, allowing God into our life, which minimizes the problems. It really does, and, and helps us to focus on solutions, on knowing God. And that's when truth can be revealed. When God seems lost to us, it's not God who is lost. It's us. We have veered off the path. Lowell's words are, when you are tempted to believe that God has deserted you, stop and check yourself up, for you are straying away from God. I think that's a perfect thought for those of us who are beginning to feel a little lost in this pandemic experience. It would be easy to feel as if we were all alone, as, as if God had deserted us, and yet we're never alone. Lowell suggests that it might be time when you feel that way to remember that God is the very life that fills your being that spirit of life that causes the blood to be and to flow. God is the very essence of who you are. There is no separation. There is no separation. God is in you and you are in God. Can't help but be that. So often we're trying to feel the presence of God as if we could you know, reach out and hug. Um, this energy is we could reach out and hug this person, yet God is so much more than that. God is so much closer than that. God
God is right in here. God is the essence of you. You know, I found this poem in several places. The one that really inspired me as I was reading for this week is that it was on the dedication page for the first edition written in 1964 of Lowell's book, The Prayer to Health, Wealth, and Happiness, which is a book based on some Lowellisms. It's 13 of what um, Lowell called his metaphysical gadgets affirmations that he felt were spiritually powerful. Um, you know, he's included in pretty much all of his books that I've seen a set of affirmations for each week, for each day. He called them prayer drills of ways for us to, to create a habitual, habitual energy of affirmation of expressing God in our lives. It's thought being that man had acquired um, destructive habitual thought patterns, and it took some energy to transform them into the creative energy that we, that is God expressing through us, that is constructive, that is going to create new possibilities. And affirmative prayer is how we retrain ourselves. Joel Goldsmith, one of um, a New Thought writer who I have loved to read through the years, has a great description of affirmative prayer in his book, The Art of Spiritual Healing. And it really reminded me a lot of Lowell's poem, so I want to share this with you. Just for a moment, imagine that you are experiencing an unpleasant night's dream. You are in the ocean, swimming. You have gone out too far, and you look back towards the shore, and see that there is very little hope of rescue. Even though you shout your lungs out, no one can hear you. And you are so seized with fear, you struggle and strive to reach the shore. And, of course, the harder you fight, the harder the ocean fights you. There's only one thing left for you to do. Drown. Yes, drown, but wait. In your fight, you shouted, and someone heard you, came over, and shook you, woke you up, and behold the miracle. The drowning self disappeared. The ocean disappeared. The struggle disappeared. You awakened and found that you had never left your comfortable home. All that was necessary in order to be least released from the struggle was to awaken. The answer is always to awaken, to remember that we do not pray to God, we pray from a consciousness of God. And that is what creates new energy, new life, new experiences. The turning point in this poem, that still moment, is praying from that consciousness of knowing God. We all know that moment, that sense of complete surrender, of truly letting go and letting God. Not in the sense of quitting, but in the sense of trusting, trusting in the universe to have your back, of surrendering control, of no longer beating your head against the wall, of truly letting go and trusting that the universe's will for you is absolute good and trusting that it is already in the process of expressing in your life and in the life of this planet, of every being on this planet. And truth be told, if we don't surrender and experience that still small moment, we are fighting against ourselves. We are limiting our own possibilities. Embrace the silence. Just embrace it. Breathe into it. In the silence of your soul, know that you are one with God. And allow that realization to permeate your entire being. The closing of the poem goes like this. In that still moment, after self had tried and failed, there came a glorious vision of God's power. 
And lo, my prayer was answered in that hour. So we're going to practice. We're going to create an opportunity for meditation, for conscious choice of experiencing that still small moment. So I invite you wherever you're at to get comfortable as Angela joins us with some music. I invite you to set aside anything which might distract you. If you're comfortable to put your feet on the floor, to close your eyes and take a deep breath. And then let it go. As you let the breath go, let go of any stress, any struggle, any strife. Take another deep breath all the way down to your toes. And as you exhale, let it go. Allow the chair that you are sitting on to fully support you. And in this place of relax relaxation, I invite you to allow these words to be the words of your heart. I am willing to release all condemnation I may be holding against myself or others. I forgive myself for all past mistakes, for any perceived present shortcomings, I forgive all others who I perceive may have harmed me. I let go of all fears, resentments, judgments. I release them to God. And now say to yourself, the healing life of God flows through every cell in my body, every part of my being, calling forth energy, strength, health, order, vitality, calling forth the power of God that dwells within me. As I release all worry and anxiety, I allow the forgiving love of God to shine forth, blessing myself and others with loving compassion, with understanding. May my every word and action serve to shine the light of God in my life and in the lives of those around me. I fully trust that I am in good care, that all is well as I surrender in a time of silence. Show me your way, for I am ready and willing as I wait in the silence. you, God. Thank you for the highest and best. As we bring our awareness back to this moment, to this place, to wherever we are, we remain open. We remain in the flow of God expressing in our lives and with grateful heart, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Whoever we think we 
And the truth of who we are is that we are divinely blessed. Now is the time in our service where we truly give of our gifts to support and empower this ministry, and we bless those gifts. We bless each and every one of you, knowing that it's not only your financial gifts that support this community, but it is your presence, that who we are is because you are here. And we are honored to be here to be of service. Shall we join together and bless these offerings with our offertory blessing? Divine love, 
flowing in through and as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Hmm. You will notice that in front of the lectern here, we have a prayer box. And in that prayer box, we have the prayers of those who have reached out to this community. Their, their names are in there. And they have reached out and asked us to hold them in prayer. We invite you to use the power of your imagination and add to this box the names of those you might be holding in your heart who might seem to be experiencing something less than wholeness. And we hold them in our hearts knowing that God is already at work as we pray. Sweet, sweet spirit. As we connect and know the one presence and one power, we send this love and light forward into the lives of all of those whose names have been spoken out loud and in the silence of our heart. We know that there is nowhere that God is not and that God is already at work doing God's work. And we release this to God's hands, to the hands of divine love. And as we let go, we know that this light, this love goes forward wherever it is needed to uplift and inspire, to bring forth unlimited peace, love and joy throughout all of humankind. And we give thanks as we pray this in the name and through the nature of the living, loving Christ presence. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service. We are here during the week, and if you need someone to talk to, please give us a call. It is our joy to be here and hold the space for your community. Let's close today with our prayer for protection from that presence of the, the from that energy of the one presence as we join together in affirming the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And we are blessed. God bless you.